get some footage of the little piggies. All right, y'all. <laughs> Billy from Permit Pastures Farm. We got these little piggies out here. Looks a little rough, but that's by design. We basically, in this area, this is in the permaculture barn. They have typically access between this stall and the one next to it. And we got this little chute gate that gets them over there. So right now we're in a position where we want to kind of clean this up. Now, typically we would go with the deep bedding thing. But this whole part of the barn is about to be worn, it's about to be torn down. These days it's kind of hard to come across some good pig stock. And obviously the reasons, you know, everybody has concerns and I won't cover any of that right now. But all of these Yorkshires and everything, we got them and I was a little suspicious about where we got them from. But we got them anyway with the understanding that we know how to doctor them back. Now part of it, and like I said, I suspected from the very beginning they might have had worms. But here's what we use to get that out of them. Now, if, if it comes down to it, we will use, in the very extreme cases, we would use something more extreme. But inside their food every day, which in this case just happens to be a little bit of bread, some rice, some beans, and a few other things, when we, um, every morning, actually twice a day, I'll put a little bit of diatomaceous earth in there, and also some pumpkin seeds, garlic, rosemary, uh, a little bit of vitamin C and some turmeric, most of which is designed to prevent and get worms out of them, okay? Now, I've checked the manure over here. It doesn't look like that's a problem, but these guys came in here looking like Auschwitz victims, and um, they seem to be coming around. They're still not perfect health, but we're, they're coming around. They're much improved, so they're active. We, ideally, we want to get them out, but they're still a little bit small, but we always get them out a little bit early anyway especially having a live livestock guardian dog. Now, in the future, we'll cover, we'll cover in greater detail how we train them to net. But for now, all we're doing is getting them from here to there, here to there, or we give them access to both. But I got them locked off this morning. We're gonna get their water squared away. We're gonna get all these things. So when they go into that next stall, it's gonna be very happy, wonderful. But in the process, what we're also doing is over here is where they come to eat, they drink, they, they got some mineral. We Believe me, they've been going through kelp like nothing I've ever seen before. Also, charcoal, we have them going through a bunch of that as well. And also, folks, remember, when you got them, try to handle them when they're little. Try to make sure you have a little bit of contact with them. Now, there's a couple of these boys in here we're going to have to castrate. Ideally, that would have done long before, but I wanted to make sure they were in decent health before we do that. So we'll get that done before I, to what extent we can film it, I don't know. But anyway, that'll get done here before too long. So what we're gonna do today, we're basically gonna leave them here, we're gonna go over here. This is the beauty about permaculture, y'all. We're gonna take all the manure that they've been using over here, that's one beautiful thing about pigs, is they will typically go in the same spot every time. So we're gonna collect their manure, anything else that's in it, let's say there's worms, who cares? Because I'm gonna take all that and drop it down at the chicken tractor on steroids. And that's the beauty of pigs, I'm sorry, of pigs working in conjunction with your chickens. Because the chickens are not susceptible to any of the parasites that might affect these guys, right? So they break up that parasite cycle. That is the beauty of that. So you can take a little bit of overlap and use it in today's status quo and ask yourself, okay, you got one animal that's completely unaffected by the parasites of another. There's a larger picture here that I won't cover. I'm going to leave it to you to see between the lines. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead, let these guys chill for a minute. It'll get cleaned up. We're gonna give them new bedding. We're gonna make everything just wonderful. So for now, we're gonna get over here, shovel out their manure, and there ain't a whole lot of it because I've been collecting it pretty often. But people wanna know how we're doing this. Mm. So we're gonna move out of this stall, go to the other side, get that cleaned up, put down some new bedding, lure them over with something I know they love, and then it's back to the races. Seems like no matter the pigs we raise, it doesn't even matter. They always seem to want to manure in the same spot. And in this stall, which you can see the bedding isn't too bad, we got a lot of the black stuff you see down there is not pig poop, by and large, is charcoal. And it, it bioaccumulates all that stuff, so when we give them charcoal, you can tell if they're a little bit low, and they, if they're court low by, based on how much charcoal and 
um, other things they eat, like kelp. And we give them the kelp on demand. So right here in this corner is where they always seem to like to make their deposits. And that's wonderful because it makes cleanup so much easier. So all we're going to do is take this stuff. You know, this isn't the most efficient way to do it, but we're going to tear all this down anyway. So I'm not worried about getting a deep bedding in here. I'll just need a place for them to grow up a little bit before I put them outside to the elements. So all we're going to do is take this stuff basically from here to here, put it in a bag. We're going to set it off to the side. Okay, this thing is largely cleaned up. We got some things in here that they see as toys also, like bigger logs of charcoal, stuff like this. We also have access, you can see them over there wanting to come over. This is, this is what I'm gonna bank on a lot of times and you can use that as your, to your benefit. Is that a lot of these pigs have a natural inquisitiveness. So they usually have access to this and they're thinking, oh gee, what's he doing over there? Let's find out. So let me go ahead and shut this door We'll get them over here. They may not all bum rush in here, but I'm gonna give them a reason to here before long. Come on, piggy. Come here. See, I'm using their natural inquisitiveness, and of course, it's always follow the leader. Come on, boy. Come on. As soon as they get over, come on. <laughs> just yeah, look dope. at this. They go straight to the to the soft stuff. Now there's always got to be a straggler, okay. And that's the little runt. Okay, so they're in here. They're digging it. So we're going to go out here, clean the other side, and then we'll give them access to everything. Now this stuff in here, now it looks messed up, but this is honestly not that bad. Um, we're going to eventually get over to a pig nipple waterer, so they're not making so much of a mess. But we don't want to do too much in terms of infrastructure here because, like I said, all this is coming down when we get ready to uh, start hopping and popping on the earth ship. Now, they've done a little bit of manure over here, but this is also a great opportunity. Clean out their feed dishes. They're small enough to where I don't have to worry about them flipping them up so much right now. So we'll go ahead and get everything out of here cleaned up. And guess what? Chickens are absolutely going to love us for what we're about to do in here. So we'll take what's left of their feed put it in a uh, bucket, take it up to the bigger pigs, and then clean everything out, and then we'll start all over again with them. But that's really it. And there's little things like this, y'all, where a little ball like this that they can't absolutely destroy, they'll sit here and push this thing around. We'll go ahead and throw it over to them. They'll push this thing around. There you go, piggy. They'll have a good time. And through the heat of the day, you know, they're largely going to chill out here. But I don't have to worry about them. They're still small. But still, they're in that case. When, they, Like I said, folks, when you get animals, and these days, it's hard to find good stock. That's why things move slowly. That's why when we move our sheep right now, we go behind them because we're not, we're not impacting the land near enough. We have to go behind it and hit it with a weed eater in some spots just because they can't possibly keep up with the forage. Now, it was not that way when we got here a year and a half ago. So it's pretty awesome that it's gotten to the point that it, you know, that we, that we have to do that. But if we don't keep that grass in a vegetative state, then we're gonna wind up paying the price in the other way. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead, get over here, get this packed up, put down some new bedding. Here we go, y'all. Let me just kind of give you a quick tour. <laughs> like MTV Cribs, check out my pig crib. Anyway, over here is all the stuff we haven't gotten. We, uh, we'll get it later. Because anyway, within that chicken tractor on steroids, we like to layer things. Well, this is the stuff that we still have to get out of here. But they have all new straw down here right now. 
We could use that silver grass. We could use any number of things. But now that that's done, I got a little pile here of uh, biochar, which is only going to be activated as it goes through their digestive tract. When it comes out the other end, turbocharges everything. I know there's some debate on whether or not that works, but we know that it does. Okay, over here we got a couple of their feed pans, just some bread in there, things I know they love. And then back in the corner where you can't see it, or maybe you can, we got their water pail, and we also have kelp on demand right here. So they got everything they need. So we're gonna go ahead and let them in and look at them. They're lined up. They know what time it is. They're like, oh, you cleaned out our place. It's like coming back to your hotel room after the maid has already done their thing. Okay, let's get you little piggies in here. I'll get out of the way. Okay, while they're, look at that. Okay, you can still see bones on them, but y'all, they're getting better. So we wanna get them a little more healthy before we go ahead and castrate those males. Ideally, we would have preferred to done it long before now, but they're still small enough to where we can manage them. So they're out here digging this, they got everything they need. Now they have access to both places. And when you give pigs something like this, you'll realize that all these claims about pigs just being nasty animals is not true. About pigs being, you know, hard to maintain. That's not true. They're easier to manage than chickens. People think I'm crazy when I say that, but it's the truth. Than dogs. So, actually, they're easier to manage than just about everything out there if you just know what they like, don't like, and what they're prone to do. And we'll cover that more here in a little while when we get into showing you how we train them to the electric net. Now, they're going to eat, hang out over here, but they're going to poop on the other side right by the door, making life very, very easy for us. So that's exactly where we are on these guys. Um, I'm going to try as best I can to get them out earlier than we typically would for a whole variety of reasons. They're going to do a lot better outside. Right here is cool, but it's not ideal. So that's what we're going to work on next before too long. Now, we're going to go down the hill and we're going to show you what we do with the bedding that we get out of here. Some of you already know, but some of you are new to this and you're new to this channel. So we're going to show you how we create this symbiosis between the pigs and every other thing out there. So just to recap, we've taken their bedding. Now we're going to load it in the truck. We're going to take it down the hill and we're going to show you what we do with it. All right, y'all, the beauty of permaculture. You know, one cool thing about that I was thinking about it on the way down is normally shoveling poop would be a very unpleasant task for most people. I've never found it that because I know what I'm going to do with it. All of that stuff is about to go right in here to this cage. This is why it really helps your mindset when you do things in a permaculture method in my view, because every time I do the uncomfortable tasks that most farmers would dislike, it's no big deal to me because I know what I'm doing with it. Right here, these chickens are gonna break up the pest cycle and in this cage, all the way up here, y'all, we're making soil. We're making, we're making compost. Oh my goodness, look at that. Yeah, looks awful, but these chickens are gonna love it. They're gonna go through that pig poop. They're gonna get what they want out of it. They're gonna do all those things. I'm gonna stomp it down because lately, I've been getting a little bit lax on how much we put in these cages. So I'm gonna make sure, because I know that it's one and a half cubic yards if I fill it to the brim. Look at this guy, already, already digging it. Ain't that right, girl? So, every single day, I can take these things that are unwanted excrement, you name it. Things that most people don't wanna deal with. I can honestly say I shovel poop with a smile on my face. How many people can say that? because I know where it's going. I know what it's gonna become. I know the vegetables it's gonna create. I know the soil it's gonna build. I know the animals it's gonna satisfy. I know the microbial life that'll benefit. I know that everything, just like the fingers of your hand, are all being satisfied by my shoveling that poop. How do you not love that? Anyway, folks, we got another bag on the outside. When they go through this, they're gonna work it over. We'll give them another bit of food this afternoon and later on tonight we'll take that bag cover it up with more of this carbon more nitrogen obviously because there's pig poop in it and look at them they're already this one right here you can't see it but it's already going through a pig patty <laughs> or a pig hot dog whatever you want to call it the way they go 
already went through there and they're gonna bust that thing up. This is exactly why this is so beautiful, y'all. It's why I love this system. It's why I go to bed at night. Can't wait to get out of bed the next day to do it all over again. So here we are. The I don't know that anybody, I've heard anybody else wax as philosophically about shoveling poop as I just did, but it's honest and it's true. So anyway, folks, remember, we got bone sauce for sale at the website. We also have comfrey. Possibly going to have honey up there too. Go check us out on Patreon as well. We have a lot of great information over there. Plus, on Patreon, you have dibs. Every time we have something new like limited products like bone sauce, because we make so little at a time, you get it on the front end before it goes out to everybody else. So you also have that benefit as well. We try as best we can to give you the very best benefit in everything we do, folks. Everything we do. So it's, whether it's the comfrey, the bone sauce, the honey, the knowledge, all of that stuff, we're pouring into that. And um, we're hoping a great many of you uh, get some joy and some benefit out of all of this. So folks, remember, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Most importantly, folks, tell folks about what we're doing out here because we're taking these waste streams and putting them into something that benefits, that benefits your farms in colossal ways that, that many other folks aren't doing. So until next time, this is Billy. The Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture, is my passion. Right here's the reasons why, y'all. We'll see you next time.